find find max or maximum value of sigma. Okay, when I say maximum value is, uh, I want to find at what inclination I get the maximum value. So if you remember, if you put the sigma down, sigma x plus sigma y divided by two plus sigma x minus sigma y divided by two cosine to p plus tau x y sine to p. Okay, so corresponding. Okay, so what is done is if you want to find the maximum or extremum value of anything, you pretty much take the derivative of that quantity with respect to the variable you're trying to maximize. So in this case, we're maximizing with respect to the inclination p. So we take the first derivative of sigma with respect to p and that we set it equal to zero, right? And then the second derivative tells us it's a maximum or a minimum. So setting it to zero, we have uh, the first term is constant. So that's the derivative is zero. The second term we have sigma x minus sigma y divided by two. Note that sigma x and sigma y are constant. So they'll show up as they are. We only have to take the derivative of cosine two phi. That's minus sine two phi times the derivative of two phi with respect to phi, that's two. And then tau x y is a constant. Cosine of two phi is the derivative of sine two phi times two. So if you take that and set that equal to zero, we can solve for phi. So we have sigma x minus sigma y divided by two sine two phi equals tau x y cosine two phi. So we can write tan two phi equals sigma x minus sigma y divided by two tau x y. So that's the phi at which uh, the, sh the normal stress achieves the maximum. Okay, let's call that phi. Uh, it's called PPP P, P because P is the called the principal stress. To indicate the principal st stress. Since you're finding the directions, principal stress direction. Now, when we have tan to phi equals some value, I don't know if you know, but the tangent, if the there are four quadrants, it's the sine of tangent in in on the so p goes from zero all the way to 360 right so zero all the way to 360 so in the first quadrant zero to 90 it's positive and it's again positive from 180 to uh, 270 and so when you solve for p p you'll have two values for p they will be in the first quadrant and the third quadrant So that would be 180 to 270, other would be 0 to 90. So that gives me the direction. Now, what about the value of the principal stress, sigma, and what's the value of the shear stress when we put in those values? So what we can do is we can substitute uh, this value for 10, Almost out of time. So we can sub in sub the value of P P in equation for sigma and tau to get the following. So if you put it in the equation for tau, you get tau equals zero. If you put in the equation for sigma, you get Two values for sigma. I'm almost done. Give me a minute. Sigma one two equals sigma x plus sigma y divided by two plus or minus p 
Okay, so what this is telling you is that uh, when sigma is maximum, we have well, we have two values, and for both those values, the shear stress is uh, zero. Last class, somebody pointed out I did a mistake in simplifying this. This formula is wrong. It should have been switched. So if you find tan of p, it's uh, it's the reciprocal of this, so it should be, so just correct this in the notes if you are taking this down, it's two tau xy, sigma x minus sigma y, okay? Now, what you can do is once you have the expression for uh, the direction at which sigma attains a maximum value, that's, we can call it phi p, we can sub that value in the expression for tau and it simplifies to zero, which means that when the, when the normal stress attains a maximum value, sigma one and sigma two, which I've written down here, stress, stress is zero, okay? So there are two values and then the shear stress is just zero. And the reason why there are two values is because if you look at 10 phi, two, 10 to phi, P, then tan is positive in two quadrants and negative on two quadrants. So any value, if this expression is positive, then it will have two values, either in the first and the third quadrant, or if it is negative, it will be in the second and fourth quadrant. So you'll always it'll come in pairs. Okay, so that's PP here is the direction. Now, everything will come together when we do the Mohr circle. Okay, so we got that. Let's move on to the second part, which is how do we find the maximum shear stress? And for that, all we do is take the expression for tau and differentiate with respect to phi. So find the maximum value for tau. So we take d, tau t phi. So when we differentiate that, so by the way, what's, we just put down the value for tau. Tau is something we derived earlier. It's minus sigma x minus sigma y divided by two sine of two phi plus tau x y plus sine two phi. So when we take the derivative with respect to phi, and this is a partial derivative. So partial derivative means that you keep the other terms constant, treat them as constants. So here sigma x, sigma y, tau x, y are treated as constants. So we have minus sigma x minus sigma y divided by two. The derivative of sine two phi is cosine two phi times two, because when you take the derivative of the thing inside the, the Cosine, that's the chain rule, plus tau xy. The derivative of cosine is minus sine two phi times two. Okay, so we equate that to zero and solve for phi. So now when you solve for phi, you actually end up getting another expression in terms of tangent. So tan, and I call it tan two phi s. Just the s here indicates that's the maximum value for shear. Sure. So equals, uh, let's see, two sigma, that's not right. It's minus sigma x minus sigma y, two times tau x y as I've written it here. I'll just check it. Does it so? So again, if you see uh, whatever that value is, right, it's tan to two phi is whatever that is, could be positive or negative. Again, tangent is positive in two quadrants and negative in two quadrants. So it always comes in pairs. Quick question. Uh, didn't we like the bottoms working on the top? Like you just asked us to correct that in the last assignment. Yeah. So here, 
cosine, I divided the whole thing by cosine. So I have 10. And so tau xy remains where it is, and then this goes down. Okay. So this is okay, right? This expression, the correction, corrected version. And then this one is actually the opposite of that. This is going to be when you take this down, we divide it by cos 2p, we'll have this thing here divided by tau xy. All right, when I written down notes, I swapped them out. So, but this is the right one. Yeah, just go back and yeah, check it out. It's it works out, it comes from here. Yeah. Okay, this is right. Okay, so we have that expression now. The question is, uh, we got the direction that's P of S. Now, what we need to do is take that, sub in the value for, uh, sub this P in the expression for tau, sub this in the expression for sigma, and find what the actual value for the maximum shear stress is. So if you do that, you get tau max equals plus or minus sigma x minus sigma y square plus tau x y square. Okay, so that's the maximum value. We also want to know what the value for sigma is when we sub in the maximum shear stress. So it turns out that the normal stress is not zero, unlike the previous case, it's actually a non-zero value, it's sigma x plus sigma y divided by two. So this is max tau. And then I don't know if I circle the other one. Yeah, this is max sigma. Okay. Okay, one final thing before we get to the more circle. So I wrote down the direction for the maximum normal stress, right? So it was 10 of to Vp equals two tau xy sigma x minus sigma y. And then I wrote down the expression for tan to Ps. This is the maximum direction for shear stress equals minus sigma x minus sigma y two tau xy. Okay, now, Here's the interesting thing. If you take the product of the two, okay, and literally multiply them, you'll see that it's equal to minus one. So do you know what have what how they are related if it's the product of the tangents is equal to minus one? So there is this uh, it's, this is uh, this is an identity for tangent. If you have tan A plus B, you can written as tan A plus tan B divided by one minus tan A tan B. Sorry, to check this out. That's right. My bad. This should be okay. So if you have so this is an identity indicating uh, tangent of two angles, and subtract them out, you get this expression now. If this is equal to minus one, right? Then what you see is that uh, a minus b 
So if tan A tan B equals minus one, then uh, tan A minus B is infinity. And when they are infinity, the tangent should be equal to 90 degrees. Tangent of 90 degrees is um, infinity. Okay, so that's something to remember now. It put a lot of math there, um, sigma x, sigma y, everything floating around. Uh, I think it's much, much easier if I show you a visual method of figuring out what's going on. And that's probably easier to do this using what they call Mohr circle, what probably came from the person whose name was Mohr. Um, and so what we're going to do is, uh, this is going to be sort of a replacement. Sometimes people like to complement what we have so far with uh, with the math. So uh, this is a visual approach of showing everything we showed, but just using pretty diagrams. And some people uh, like to do it that way because it's more visual. So we are going to more circle, which is a visual or visualization of all the above calculations. That is including the maximum shear, the maximum normal stress, the directions PP, PX. Okay, so what we'll do is I'm going to rewrite two formulas. One of the formula is to do with sigma. So we wrote sigma, uh, just you wish flash it in front of you and then write down the expression. So this was something we I wrote down in the last class. So I wrote down an expression for tau, so that tau is the shear stress at an angle, right? And then I wrote an expression for, for sigma. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that expression down again, except that I'll move this sigma x plus sigma y to the left side, and that will make it make make it slightly easier for me to show you what where the circle is actually coming from. So I'm going to write the expression of for sigma, but I'll move the sigma x plus sigma y on the other side. And then I would write the expression for tau as it is, tau equals minus sigma x minus sigma y, a two sine two p plus tau x y cos sine of two p. Okay, now what we can do here is we can square one. So we literally do is take one, square it, take two, square it, and then see what we get. Okay. So one, two here means these expressions. So we have sigma minus sigma x plus sigma y divided by two square, because that whole thing is squared. And then I need to sum the, take the square of the second one. So I'm just going to square it, sum it with the second one. So that's my left hand side. Right hand side, it turns out that if you do the, the math on squaring and summing it up, you'll see that uh, the phi just disappears from the expression, just cancels off. And you're left with sigma x minus sigma y divided by two square plus tau x y square. Okay. So 
That, by the way, is the equation of a circle with uh, sigma, let's call sigma as the x coordinate and tau as the y coordinate. So if sigma is the x coordinate, y is tau, uh, tau is the y coordinate, then that is basically the equation of a circle with center at sigma x plus sigma y divided by two comma zero, right? This thing here is going to give you the center, the, the coordinate for the center on the y-axis is going to be zero. And this thing here is the radius square. In other words, the equation of a circle is something like this, x minus a square plus y minus b square equals r square, where a here, if you check back, it's sigma x minus sigma y divided by two, I write sigma x plus sigma y, b is zero, r is the square root sigma x minus sigma y, two square plus tau x y square. And of course, x is r, sigma and y is r tau. Okay, so if it's a circle, let's just draw a circle and just start thinking of uh, the stresses on an incline in terms of a circle. So I'm going to draw a circle and then show you what these things mean on the circle. And that's probably a, uh, an intuitive and visually appealing way of solving these problems. Okay, so let's draw a circle. Okay, bigger is better. Okay, I think it's center is right there. So just draw the axis. Okay, so now we are all set to mark things up. So as I said, the center of the circle is sigma x plus sigma y divided by two. So it's the center. Okay, this by the way is the sigma axis. This is the tau axis. And then the radius of the circle, which is this. is, as I said, it's sigma x minus sigma y squared plus tau x y squared. Okay, so that's the first part. Now, let's go to the other things we talked about. We talked about the maximum normal stress, okay? Now you don't really, really need to do the math here. You can actually see the, what the maximum stress would be. If this is the sigma axis, the maximum stress is basically this point, right? It's kind of obvious that's the maximum point. Where does sigma t achieve of the maximum value? It's on the, uh, on, the, on the diameter as shown. Where does sigma achieve the minimum value? It's right here. So sigma one, zero. Sigma to zero. Okay, you also see that the shear stress is zero. Right, exactly what we computed, but this time it's much a lot easier because the, the circle told us everything. So then the question is, what's the point where you have maximum shear stress? So shear is the y-axis. So what point on the circle is the maximum shear stress? It has to be the, the top and the 
bottom portion, right? So it's so it's right here. Okay, so the coordinates of that point are clearly sigma x plus sigma y divided by two, and this would be tau max. I wrote the tau max earlier. I'll not write it. So it's a long expression, but you can look at there. And I'll we solve problems where it will be clear. That's the max value. But then there is another point here where it is, which it has the maximum magnitude but opposite sign. So sigma x plus sigma y divided by two minus tau max. Okay, so now let's come to, so that's the easier part. Now, now the other thing which is interesting here is how do we really connect this with uh, our shear element, right? So we have the cube and the cube is has stress, right? Sigma X, Sigma Y, Sigma X, Sigma x, sigma y, sigma y, and then uh, tau x y. So I, I I drew that, and that's at an inclination of zero. Theta is zero, right? And I can then rotate it, and then when theta changes, the stress sigma x will change. It'll in fact. At a certain inclination, it will be sigma one, comma zero, which which means that the shear stress is zero and so on. So it turns out that uh, all you need to do is to find what this configuration is on that circle. All you need to do is find that point sigma x, sigma y, uh, sorry sigma x, and tau x y, and plot it on the figure. So sigma x let's say is this point okay so let's say it's i don't know 50 mpa so you see what 50 is on that and then just plot it okay now there's something about tau which is kind of tricky and this might be a lead to confusion but that's the convention followed if you have a tau xy the way it is shown it turns the cube counterclockwise, okay? And that's considered positive for that diagram. However, when we plot it on the more circle, we'll actually show that with a negative sign. So although this is positive, when we show it on the more circle, it'll be shown with a negative sign. So if, if you see that is, let's say, 30 MPA tau xy, and it's positive based on that, on that diagram on the right, the cube, you will actually plot it as minus 30 on the Mohr circle. So it'll actually be, it won't be there. Right? That is, seems like that's positive, but it'll be shown here. Because of the way it is uh, set up. So what we'll do is, this is said to be positive shear, and that up there is negative shear. So this point is slightly confusing, but uh, you got to remember this. You need to switch the signs when you draw it on the Mohr circle. So what the Mohr circle does actually is it basically gives you what the stress is on on the on a plane. So what I mean by that is, let's say that this plane is A, or this face is A. On that face, there are two stresses. There's a normal stress sigma x, there's a shear stress tau xy. That stress is a, basically a point on the Mohr circle. So that is the stress at the face A, which I just drew there. To find the stress at the other face, which is B, I do the same thing, basically. I figure out the normal stress. It's sigma y, 
Now I'm going to draw it as a special plate. It actually turns out it's going to be uh, right here. And the reason is that Sigma y, sigma x. The reason why it's going to be here is that you see that the center of the circle, it's basically the arithmetic mean of sigma x and sigma y, so it has to be on the left side, it can't be anywhere else. And so then this stress, the shear stress, remember that shear stress is always acts as a complementary pair. So if tau x, y is turning the element counterclockwise on phase A, it's turning uh, tau x y and phase b is going to turn the element clockwise because for the system to be in equilibrium the moments should be equal to zero and so that's how the stress can act so let me put it this is sigma y this is tau x y okay so now tau x y on phase b is clockwise or turns the element clockwise which means that on the Mohr circle, we should show it with a positive sign. Okay, even though it's negative because it's turning the element clockwise. On the cube, it, it is thought to be negative, but on the Mohr circle, it should be on the positive end. So it would be here because of this tau x y. So once you have this, you if you want, you can join the two points. They should actually pass through the center. I think I might have done a poor job of. Drawing, drawing these things. See. Let me first join it and then draw the point. Okay, so this should move. My bad on the drawing. Again, what this point is, its point is the face B. Okay, face A, face B. And they always have to be at, uh, on this circle, they should be 100 degrees apart. On the cube, they are always 90 degrees apart. Anything 90 degrees apart on the cube is always twice on the Mohr circle. So that's the the property. So you got that. Now there are two more things we had computed. We had computed the direction of maximum uh, maximum shear stress and maximum normal stress. And we already have those things on the plot, right? We have this point, this point, this point. Now we also had some directions there, phi s, phi p. What are those phi s, phi p on the Mohr circle? They're actually these uh, angles I'm going to show in a, in a bit. So Phi S is the angle made by phase A, or Phi P, let's take that first, by angle made by the line joining uh, the center to the point sigma X tau X Y to the X axis. This is one of the principal stresses and that makes sense because this is the principal stress, right? So the angle is uh, Phi P one as I've shown, uh, the convention is counterclockwise is positive. So if it comes out to be positive, then you would say that uh, it is to be taken in the counterclockwise direction from the face A, which means from the point shown as A on the Mohr circle. And then the other angle is basically the angle made by, so there's two angles, PP1 and PP2, because they always come in, come in pairs, right? The other angle is the angle made by Again, the same uh, face A with the x-axis, but on the other, other side, because it should give me the stress on uh, the, the next principal stress, phi 2 so That's good. That's going to be phi P2. Okay, so then I had two more angles. One was the angle made with the maximum shear stress angle. So that's basically this this point and this point. So it's it's very similar to this. You just have to draw the angle from here all the way there. That's PS1. So that's your maximum angle. And if, if you like to call tau one as maximum or tau max as ma the maximum stress. And then the other one, um, it really depends. You could, you could go all the way 360, sorry, 180, 
you could show it that way or you could just show it this, this the uh, smallest angle so in this case be minus ps2 okay my, one correction though as i said i should should have fixed this uh, everything on the most circle will have a two in it okay so i forgot to put that so it'd be two fp two fp1 two fps and two fps2 But when I look at it on the cube, it's always going to be half of that. So what it's saying is that if I want to find the direction or inclination of maximum maximum normal stress, that is 2 Fp1 on the Mohr circle, then I need to rotate that face A by an angle Fp1, not 2 Fp1. So what this is saying is if I take this cuboid and this is my face a all i need to do is rotate this face by an angle of p p1 okay so when i do that The cuboid is in this direction, right? This is inclined. So the face A, which was over here, which was along the y axis, is now going to be along this, along that direction, right? So this is the, let's see, call that A prime. So that's this point is A prime. And on A prime, we will have sigma one. And there will be zero shear stress. So this stress is zero because the coordinate is zero. We can do the same reasoning for, for B, right? So B was right there. It also rotated. So it was originally horizontal. It moved to this, this, this place. So it's B prime. This is my original B. And uh, the stress on B on phase B, when it's rotated, it's right here, is going to be sigma two comma zero. So sigma two, and then this tau is zero. So now the cuboid has rotated by an angle Cp1, and all the phase A has moved by Cp1, and this is what the stress is going to look like if you rotate. So if the weld, for example, in our previous, the beam problem was, at an angle of Cp1, then we could say that the shear stress would be zero and the normal stress would be uh, sigma one and sigma two. Yeah, question? Uh, just like Oh no, minus two. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, the same thing you can do for the PS1 and PS2, which is uh, all you do is just like I rotated it, it's element face A by PP1. In order to get to the maximum shear stress, you need to turn by PS1. So you would do the same thing. You would turn the start of this way, this is phase A. You would rotate uh, it's a little bit more rotation here. So it'd be phi S1. And so this will be the new A, let's call it A double prime. This will be B double prime, which is this A double prime, B double prime. The stress here would be
exactly what it is shown here. It's sigma x plus sigma y divided by two. Sigma x plus sigma y. sigma x plus sigma y divided by two. And the same thing over here, here, and here, because the stresses are the same. However, the shear stress is no longer zero. It's going to be uh, tau max. So that's, so let's see, tau max is shown to be negative, right? Uh, so negative is, up, is upward. So it should be, uh, so negative on the Mohr circle, is positive down there. And so positive rotates things clock counterclockwise. I would put it this way. That's face A. Face B will be the, exactly the opposite because they always come in, in pairs. So that's pretty much what it is to the whole thing, which is um, either you're given uh, element at an inclination of some angle, and then you, you'll be given the stresses, and then you can find the stresses at any orientation. So if you are, uh, if you're given the stresses in theta equals zero, then it's easy to figure that out using the math. But the Mohr circle is very powerful because if I gave you the stresses on some random point, right? The Mohr circle construction helps you to get the stresses very quickly. You don't need to go through all those uh, numbers, sigma x, sigma y, it's just too much. It, so it's it's more appealing, I think. It's easy to understand. Uh, it takes a little bit of mastery. I would say more problems you solve, the better you get at, at solving problems related to more circle. So what we'll do is we have about eight minutes. When we get started on a problem, and then uh, I can let you try to solve it at home, and then we'll I'll finish it next time because I don't have enough time to finish it. So I think this thing, as I said, will be very clear once we solve one or two problems. So let's just uh, solve a problem.